So Nepal is a country which has a serious lack of energy and that is combined with a significant scarcity of water. In a nutshell, people have a very thin layer of available resources and those resources are often very poor. Just under half of the population have a lack of access to modern energy services and to electricity and the rest of the population that lives in the urban areas is serviced by very poor and infrequent energy services that are cut sometimes up to six, seven, eight or nine hours a day. So when you're that vulnerable, one very small shock can actually put you completely on your back. Renewable World exists to bring the skills, expertise and knowledge of the renewable energy industry to some of the poorest people uh, on this planet. And here in Nepal you can really see it functioning. So on the plains of the Ganges which come up to the foothills of the Himalayas, um, an area in Nepal that's called the Terai, where we have a very large biogas program. In the foothills of the Himalayas where we're using solar energy to pump water and then also in the Darding districts where we use Hydram is pressure technology to lift water. I'm working with partners, partners such as International Development Enterprises, IDE, with Centre for Rural Technology, CRT, and with a biogas sector partnership, BSP. And so what I'm trying to do is bring together a programme, a holistic programme across the region that fits together and is neat but also complementary, that allows our work uh, to help uh, break a poverty cycle so it can be used for rural livelihoods uh, and also to increase people's income and health and education. So by adding assets such as renewable energy and turning those assets into impacts, you build people's resilience to shock. So we work with biogas. I love this project. It's a large-scale biogas project. Which is produced from animal dung and human dung and supporting the development of community level systems. This is an inlet. Uh, we put uh, dung and water one is to one here. Then it will roll here so it will make more dilute and then it will go inside the digester. We are on the top of, of the dome. Gas will store here. So from this gas valve we can open it and close it. Then throw the gas line. This uh, gas will pass to the kitchen. And uh, that is uh, the inlet for the toilet, so there will be feeding from the toilet also. Once the uh, gas is full, then it will press the slurry here and then it will come out outside there. So that is the slurry pit. It's called compost pit also. Small scale farmers can sell their dung and animal waste into the systems and then buy biogas. Uh, it brings increased uh, livelihoods and increased revenue to the local community. Uh, it helps uh, preserve the local forests and it cuts down uh, carbon emissions. So for cooking, for micro-businesses, for pasteurising milk, for making candles. And we can look inside people's houses and they're not burning uh, biomass anymore. This is the solar powered multiple uses water system. There is a source below the forest and it is about 1400 meters from here. And we have a pipeline system from the source to the tank. And the pipeline drops water to this tank and it is from the gravitational force of water and the water coming from there. This is called ferro cement line tank and it has capacity of 14,000 liters and water is collected in this tank and the water is lifted up to the tank in the community. So there is a pump installed inside the tank. This pump inside the tank is operated with a solar panel of 2,430 watt of power. We use local manpower for the construction of this tank. The total cement used in this tank was only 40 bags. The cost for the tank is approximately 60,000 nipple rupees. Now, right now, we are using this tank for storing water from this gravity source down to the community and this is also used for rainwater harvesting and other purposes. We have here 18 panels, uh, each of 135 watt and this actually generates power to pump water from the tank below and to pump up to the tank in the community. This type of a project is very essential in Nepal, uh, like a country in Nepal. 
I know that the community is very much happy to be a part of the, uh, this project. The first objective of this project is to improve the sanitation uh, health of the people. So we are taking into account the uh, need for drinking and need for irrigation. So we are also educating the users to use micro-irrigation technologies. So if the farmers use micro-irrigation technology, it helps us to save the water. And we have also training packages on agriculture extension, social mobilization and marketing. So it, it, it is not only the infrastructure, but also it's for their social and other, uh, other welfare for the people in the community. Basically, the hydraulic ram pump is a device that uses the high amount of water falling through the sorting head and it lifts the water up the higher head in a smaller amount. For the hydraulic ram pump, you need a continuous source of water. From the source, you have to take the water to a smaller tank. Then you have to drop it for the 1 to 6 meter of vertical height. It lifts only 10% of water up to the 200 meter of height of the falling water. The lifted water of hydraulic ram pump can be used in catering, drinking water supply and for the micro irrigation. It saves the time of all housewife and especially of children uh, to go down to collect the water. They can use that time in their productive work. They can have better, better hygiene, better food and they can have a very good income generating activities and from this technology I also feel like that we can stop the hill migration because of the lack of water and we can save the socio-cultural effect and socio-cultural aspect of the high hill community here in Nepal. Um, I'm exceptionally pleased in terms of what we've managed to achieve in the country. So we've seen an increase in uh, productivity across the whole of the projects. And typically you can see them earning up to $200 per household more in one year. I mean a huge increase uh, on their household income. Um, and that money is used for sending children to school, on buying access to health care, uh, and means that the drudgery is no longer there in their lives and they can dedicate uh, their time to more productive uh, uses. We're not only working to try and bring energy to poor people, uh, we're also working to try and build sustainable businesses here. But we're also not about making ourselves jobs. So ultimately, we would walk away and the people that are running the energy business, that are pumping the water, that are growing the crops, they will run it for themselves. Um, and we, of course, can then go off to different parts of the world and uh, repeat the process. And we've also seen a, uh, an increase in confidence within our communities. To see that in its totality and to understand the potential that this technology can reach thousands if not tens of thousands of communities is something that is very exciting. If we think about the development of the world globally, then the renewable energy will play a significant role in the next 20 to 30 years. Renewable world is at the forefront of expanding and developing that possibility. Obviously we're looking for support for the organisation. Please help us uh, and support uh, some really excellent work that we're doing here uh, in Nepal and actually across our global programme. The entire renewable energy uh, industry should be proud um, of what has been achieved uh, in Nepal and we look forward to working with them much closer and more effectively in the future. We, we actually have a fantastic plan and a fantastic delivery uh, and we actually really do uh, change people's lives significantly.